they all say the whole of the art world was against the ruling class, the elites that were fighting today. The artisans, the media people, they all got together and they all created their own magazines and their own newspapers. They may not be around today, but it has been done before, even without the internet. So even if that prize jewel gets taken away from us, we're still a capable human beings. Yeah. <coughs> it rains and there's no internet. Yeah. 20,000 people in the field, no internet, no mobile phones. Yeah. But we were also getting fucked up with our own phone, it was internet. The internet's just a monitor, isn't it? Like, it calculates how many people were going towards this movement. So, uh, every time somebody's clicking on anybody's video, they can see that more people are getting awakened to what's going on. Yes. So it's easier to, to clamp to down on people. Yeah. Also for us to gauge ourselves. Yeah. Yes. I don't think we need that much gauging. I think gauge if you go region. underneath the radar and, and give it out, uh, like, I'm 30 today, right? And I, my, my last 30 years were all full of crap. Like, it's, it's just, well, I've had a good life, 30 years, but it's all been under pretense, under false falsehoods. So I can't live like that anymore. Uh, so from today, I'm going on the road and telling everybody exactly what you're doing here. So I'm going to go on, go to go into any pub and ask the boss to use their function room, uh, and you'll get beers. Everybody will come in and buy your beer. Uh, but I'll give speeches. Yeah, and tell people that what the fuck's going on. And like, we can't keep doing this. And more people, if, if I keep doing this on the internet like you do, then they're going to be awakened to the, oh, what I know and what everybody else knows. So I think you can't, I can't go, I can't trust people. I've got to go beyond the internet and go on, into towns and cities. Do you know what I mean? Because I just can't trust the internet because I know it's all monitored. Yeah? From that point, I'll bring it back to like the deepest we can bring. I've touched it a couple of times. But what we've learned from the internet is about the birth certificate and how the birth certificate is a registered thing. Most of us have learned that from the internet or from a friend who learned it from the internet, and that's hats off to the internet for that much. <coughs> so the birth certificate creates a document. That document is a vessel. That vessel can be floated. A conspiracy just means that two or three people thought they'd not tell everyone else what they knew. It's really simple. I mean, anyone who doesn't believe in a conspiracy is so naive, I've never met one yet. Are we not conspiring against the elite right now? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this is the co-inspiracy. So okay. we're cooperating to inspire each other. Mm -hmm. So it's open source all the information is out there. As far as I'm concerned with the system, I go 100% transparent. Right? I'm involved at the moment in presenting you know, evidence to the International Criminal Court because I'm supporting the move to have the Pope arrested for three crimes against humanity. Okay? So, like, I'm absolutely full front. I go to my MP, I tell them exactly what I'm doing. I'm not frightened of anybody until they've got God in their ring face. At that point, it's too late. If I, if, no, it's not too late. Oh, well, they're not standing in place. It's, it's not too late. If somebody wants to fucking shoot me. You can talk to Matt, but man. Shoot me, bro. And you can talk to Matt, but they don't want to shoot you. So it happened to me two oh, years ago. Yeah, we got to Matt, but they don't. We live in a civilized world. world, world the transparency, yeah. but the whole thing about the conspiracy stuff that goes on is it makes people fearful. When people are fearful, they're no longer transparent. The thing I wish to mention is this, though. The thing I wish to mention is this, and to introduce is to go back. The birth certificates have been around for about 100 years in terms of mass-induced thing, in terms of a sin. The sin was created about 100 years ago. <coughs> that social identity number. 200 years before that, that's what I want to mention. Because this is still going on and hardly anybody is saying anything about it. Most people aren't even noticing it. It's the greatest indication of all to how endemic the programming is into our genealogy. That our cells learned this stuff before we were even born, but thoroughly imprinted with it when we were born, and it was thoroughly reinforced since we were born. That's essentially what they call the matrix, but here's how. A little twist of faith in a system caused this to happen. 300 years ago in France, there's a French king. I forget what his name is, I don't even care what his name is. 
Say again? Childhood. Childhood's a poor fellow in a bad situation because Charles had a court. And that court agreed that he was the next in succession. That's how he got to be king. It wasn't his choice. They all decided he was their next fucking punch bag. And they put him in position. When he eventually had a couple of kids, maybe the first one or two were girls or something, but that was no good to the court. It was good. The court just wanted to hedge its bets on who's going to be the next king and who's going to be the people in the court in control of the next king. Is it going to be the people who are in control of this king or is it going to be the other gang, the main opposition to that? Two-party politics long before there was government was called a court. Do you know this? Yeah. This is true. I've read that the Illuminati, um, well, or whoever was the Illuminati at the time, was controlling it all from way, way back before, yeah. you know, the biblical times. In terms of Europe, it began with the Romans controlling it through the religion. And that's going back 1500 to 2000 years ago. And that's beyond the measure of anyone I mostly talk to in Britain. Not beyond the measure of most people I talk to in Ireland. That's a cultural reference. <laughs> The statutes and acts are really still Roman civil law. Not European ones, but they stem from it, yes, and they stem back thousands of years before Rome. I'll get to that if you like. If you want to hear this stuff, I'll explain it, but mostly I want to see what we create, not maybe I'll say I learned so much. The thing I want to get back to is this king, whatever his name was, and the situation exactly that he was in, like all the other kings of Europe, before, after, and around him. They're all in the same position. There are bloodlines of families who've been in these positions for ages. They're near to being the bearers of the heir, or they are. They're either next in line, or they're close to it. That's what's ruled for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This particular king was about to have a kid. They didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. The whole court wanted to know if it was a boy or a girl. There was a frenzy going on. Perhaps they thought the whole fucking thing was going to fall apart around their ears. Perhaps they'd got a new kind of a drug in the new world. And that drug had just made them all fucked in the head. Whatever it is, they decided for this particular king's birth that they had to watch the baby coming out so that they could see for themselves whether it was a boy or a girl because they did not trust that there might be a conspiracy in which whoever was delivering the baby was able to swap it. Somehow in their mad, tripped out, drugged out imaginations, that's what they conceived. And because of that, the woman had to give birth on her back, on a bed, with her legs spread, so that they could see the head come out and see whether it had genitals or not when the legs came out. That's a historical fact that they don't teach them in school because you'd be on the road to finding out about their sin number and know that slavery is not some idle thing about privileges. Sin number. Social mm -hmm. insurance number. <coughs> um, I think, so just to go back on what you were saying, I think that may go back to biblical times, but yes. it's to census. Yes. Um, when Jesus was born, they wanted to find out where he was, so they had to find out where he was. You had to go back to your uh, parents or father's registration. The particular point I'm making is about all of our birth in the Western world, and that spread to the whole world. This is the whole planet is giving birth to people, mostly lying on their backs inside of cubes for the last 300 years. And before that point of that particular king in that particular court, that was not the way it was. That's what changed, and it changed endemically throughout the whole system. So how did they have babies three prior to that, before that? How the woman felt like having Any babies. Other, now you have to do it in the hospital. <coughs> now it's endemic in the system that the system says lying in your back is the best way. And because the system says that, that's what everybody in the system is trained in all the countries. Now, when you lie on your back, your cervix is pointing upwards, which blocks the head, which means it's most likely going to be a cesarean, and it most likely does. Fact. The research is all there, and we've heard this from. The medical community, the research is all there for 30 years and papered in research and again and again and again and again and again it's proven that if the woman isn't lying on her back and the cervix isn't pointing upwards to block the head, then the child spirals its way down in the space of a couple of hours. Gently, it's been going on for weeks and the woman's not freaked out with constantly being told she's going to need drugs and drugs are available and by the way, if you want a normal birth, we've got drugs, most people take them, they find they need help with the pain. And that's endemic all around the world, spread by the religions. 
to control that. It has that side effect, certainly. I wouldn't say that they were smart enough to think it, but certainly it had that effect. Yes. That's in them. So you get born through that painful experience, so you have nothing to do with it. They've taken total mental control of the whole process based on the precautionary principle that something might go wrong and we're going to try and make your birth to be normal because that means it's not diversified. It's within a mean where all the natural process of some people are really chilled out and some people just are really efficient. They're cut out. So that's what we're dealing with. That's what I'm dealing with. That's what you're all dealing with. That's how deep it is. All this stuff about talking about pieces of paper is bollocks. Put back to it. These people consider us to be subhuman and we have been raised subhuman. And we've got to take that in the chin and say, hey man, my genes aren't what they would have been if these fuckers hadn't turned up thousands of years ago and started putting the best of us to death. The pain I personally had to go through in this personal life taking extreme amounts of things into my system, horrible poisonous things into my system, in order to remember stuff that I had to remember the death of millions of ancestors to remember what I sit and talk about these days. It wasn't fun. I'd be chased around by police for looking like a scumbag all the time and not having money. No big deal, man. I was unemployable. Nobody would give me a job, so that was an easy sort of moral thing for me. But nonetheless, here's the information. How does one avoid filling out a birth registry, you can't. If you don't fill it out, they'll fill it out anyway. And say they had a baby, and when we tried to get them to fill out the form, they wouldn't. And they hand that in instead of your signature. So it's the same thing, except you haven't signed it. The system is still claiming. Unless there's a lot of us who realize this, and we can identify with each other, and empathize with each other, and say, this will happen to me one day. Not that they come and stick a gun in my head, but I'll have a baby, and I'll face the same beautiful <coughs> question. And my hand was delivering this baby today. myself without a doctor's <coughs> fucking measuring instrument in the way every 12 minutes. Or can we just do it ourselves quietly in the background without having to be fearful from everyone we know that you can't do it on your own? That humans are so highly evolved that we can't have a baby anymore. That's what we've all swallowed. Is there any part of the world where it doesn't? Where it's not like It doesn't that. happen with me. And I'm here in this most desperate sick hole. Apart from the lost tribes, we don't know about it. Don't we? We all know us. We all know us. We all know us. We gathered. We know us. We know us. We're not unfindable. Yes, we're lost. And yes, we find ourselves. Yes. That's probably why they're just... You do it internally, and then you fill it out by writing out yourself. And if you want to, you can send it to them, but you don't have to. You just write it yourself once you understand what you're writing. And then you stick to it. And if anyone comes and challenges you on it, you show them a piece of paper where you've written it. Now you're just telling yourself in your own plain words. They either accept that or get a higher officer, who you repeat the process with. Who either accepts that or get a higher officer. This is where me and Danny are getting to on Wednesday. Me and Danny are going to go and see some police woman called Claire Smart and we're going to have a chat with her. I'm going to have an awful laugh with her. <laughs> because she's got things that we want. But apparently, we've got something she wants. Now, normally they just take what they want, like you're saying. And yet these Freeman people are saying, well, if your attitude's different, if you've realised something inside of yourself, if you understand the matrix, then it's all totally different and you can swash the fuck going around carrying a gun or a sword or whatever the fuck you want and you say, like, I'm not going to hit you with it, man. There's nothing wrong. Like, chill out. And they'd accept it because you're super cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, lads, that's what we're all gathering to learn how to do. Isn't it? So, we were going to see on Wednesday that uh, after a name and a signature and It's for getting in trouble and getting twatted way too hard and saying, hey, that was too hard. Oh. <laughs> and then saying, well, you can put one of our people to that. <laughs> sure, you didn't really mean a bad thing. You must have, you know, there was a, you know, you kind of did a thing that kind of caught their attention on you. And sh yeah, I know. I don't know what they're going to say in the meeting, man. But I've been a lot of these kind of meetings with these kind of people. I'd imagine what they're going to do is listen to everything we say yeah. and record it and play it to their friends. <laughs> <laughs> and all they'll tell us is nothing. 
And if you insist on, I want my money's worth, I just told you everything I know, they'll tell you the official lie. <laughs> if you insist on that. But that's all you get out of them. You've got to be ready to be able to switch very quickly with these people. One minute you're the happy, smiling, hippie, next minute when you have to be, you're counteracting how they're treating you. You can't just be almost totally relaxed and anymore. You have to kind of be ready to defend yourself in certain ways all the time um, in front of these people. For example, I work in a school and I work in a primary school and we have lots of children from other parts of the world that can't even speak English. And when they come, I always more sensitive towards them, but what, after years of being there, you find they turn on you. People don't respond to kindness anymore at that level, at the level of being a child. The school bully them into adjusting. They say they don't, but they do. Um, their programs are cold. They, even with the disabled and mentally impaired children, they treat them like they're... They say, you can't stay there, disabled, but they treat them like it. They don't treat them like humans. <laughs> And um, I had an issue today where a child um, was goading me and goading me, a big smile on his face, and in the end I did turn around and just say, you need to lose a bit of weight, because he was going on at me. And, and um, I'm now going to be hauled over the coals tomorrow for that, So, and he's in the wrong. I've been abused, yet the kids, they've got the rights, and they're totally ignorant and thick, and they don't respect any system, even the good system. I'm not the teacher, I'm just the board staff. Yeah, but he's a human being. He's supposed to respect the people around him as well. But funny enough, that's what my daughter said. Yes, I know, but I'm not a teacher. I'll just say that. The problem is schools are having a very adverse effect on children because children are becoming statistical objects and it's driving them nuts. Are they called schools? Was that? Are they called schools as well? Schools are for fishes. Schools are for fishes. <laughs> fishes are admiralty again. Think about it, lads. It's very deep. It's there. I have a suggestion, please. You two, please. I have a suggestion. Because it seems to always be this corner. It's okay, five or six people now, plus me intervening sometimes or whatever. But can we play some sort of musical chairs? Because this whole place gets to sit in silence being observers. And this whole side gets to be the interpreters. But let's get up and change the energy, please. We're halfway through. Please, everyone, off your asses, change. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, John. Thanks, John. Excuse me, find a seat, please. Please, find a seat. At nine o'clock, baby, you can mingle, please. Uh, 